Shenhui came to be known as a Huichu, which is the name of the place where he went to live. Sutra. The master saw many disciples of other schools, all with evil intentions, gathered beneath his seat to ask him difficult questions. Pitying them, he said, "Students of the way, all thoughts of good or evil should be completely cast away. What cannot be named by any name is called the self nature. This non-dual nature is the real nature, and it is within the real nature that all teaching doors are established." But these words, you should see it for yourselves. Hearing this, they all made obeisance and asked him to be their master. Commentary: Not only did Shen Xiao's party want to murder the great master, but those of other sects, such as the Consciousness Only School, came to ask the master difficult questions. Which came first? They would ask the Buddha or the Dharma. Where does the Buddha Dharma begin? They had many questions. The sixth patriarch said, "If you can speak the Dharma, then is the first Buddha, then the Dharma. If you can listen to the Dharma, then is first the Dharma and then the Buddha. The Buddha Dharma comes from the minds of living beings." On this occasion, he saw that the crowd was full of spies and would-be assassins. Cultivators should not hold thoughts of good or evil, he said. What cannot be named by any name is called the self nature. The self nature is non-dual. It is also called the real nature, the real mark. Within it, all schools and sects are set up. It's not enough just to talk about it. However, you must understand and immediately give proof to the state of no mark. Hearing these words, the assembly realized that all their thoughts had been bound up. In good and evil, and they were greatly ashamed. They bowed down before him and said, "From now on, we'll be different. Please, great master, be our teacher." Chapter Nine, Proclamations, Sutra. On the fifteenth day of the first month, during the first year of the Shenlong reign, A.D. seven hundred and five. Emperor Tian and Emperor Chung Tsung issued the following proclamation: We have invited Masters Hui An and Shen Xiao to the palace to receive offerings, so that we may investigate the one vehicle in the leisure time remaining after our myriad duties. The two masters have declined, saying that in the south there is Jiana Master Hui Neng, who was secretly transmitted the rope, and. Drama of the Great Master Hong Chen, who now transmits the Buddha's mind seal. We now send Chamberlain Tian Chen with this invitation, hoping that the Master will remember us with compassion and come to the capital. The Master sent back a petition pleading illness, saying that he wished to spend his remaining years at the foot of the mountain. Commentary: The ninth chapter is entitled "Proclamations." Wu Zetian was an empress during the Tang Dynasty. She believed in the Buddha, but she wasn't very orthodox. In fact, she would do anything, but she believed in Buddhism, and so she invited all the high monks to the palace to receive offerings. Her son, Emperor Chung Tsung, reigned only a short time before the empress had him exiled. To Luling to be king there, so that she could take the throne. A proclamation was a letter from the emperor. When ordinary people received a proclamation, he, they bowed to it as a gesture of respect to the emperor. But people who have left home don't do this, of course. Wishing to study the One Buddha Vihago, the Sutton Teaching Dharma Door. The impressed invited masters Hui An and Shen Xiao to come to the palace to receive offerings, but they refused. We do not have enough virtue, they said. You should invite Hui Neng. He has received the fifth patriarch's robe and bow, and is a true transmitter of the mind seal. The impressed took the two masters' advice and invited the sixth patriarch to the capital Chang'an. The invitation was brought by a chamberlain. 
that is by an official of the inner court. The Chamberlain, Sian Chien, was uh, a nudge to begin serving Chinese emperors during the Han Dynasty. The sixth patriarch wrote back, I am very ill. Actually, he wasn't ill at all. This was merely an expedient device because the sixth patriarch did not wish to visit a ruler. More specifically, she did not wish to visit an empress. It would have been against the rules. Wu Tien knew nothing about moral precepts and she didn't follow any rules. But the sixth patriarch couldn't say, You're an empress and I am a patriarch and I don't have to visit you. So he said, I'm old and sick. Sutra Si Chien said, the virtuous Diana masters at the capital all say that to master the way one must sit in, med in Diana meditation and practice concentration, for without Diana concentration, liberation is impossible. I do not know how the master explains this drama. The master said, the way is awakened to from the mind. How could it be found in sitting? The Diamond Sutra states that to say, that Tathagata either sits or lies down is to walk a different path. Why? The clear pure dhyana of the Tathagata comes from nowhere and goes nowhere and is neither produced nor extinguished. The Tathagata's clear pure sitting is the state of all dhammas. Being empty and still, ultimately there is no certification, even less is there any sitting. Commentary for an illiterate, the master was quite intelligent. He answered, You awaken to the way from within your mind. You can't just sit there. You have to understand the principles of the Buddha Dharma and be enlightened to them. The enlightenment is understanding and the sitting is practice. Practicing without understanding is stupid. Understanding without practice is nothing but intellectual Zen. You must understand and practice. Don't just sit, sit, sit for several decades without even understanding the principle of enlightening your mind. The master added, since ultimately there is nothing to be attained or certified to, why be attached to sitting in meditation? Sutra, Sir Chen said, when your disciple returns to the capital, their majesties will surely question him. Will the High Master please to uh, be compassionate and instruct me on the essentials of the mind so that I can transmit them to the two palaces and to students of the way of the capital? It will be like one lamp setting a hundred thousand lamps burning, making all the darkness endlessly light. The Master said, the way is without light or darkness. Light and darkness belong to the principle of alternation. Endless light has an end, too, because such terms are relative. Therefore, the Vimalakati Sutra says, the drama is incomparable because it is not relative. Sitrian said, light represents wisdom and darkness represents affliction. If cultivators of the way do not use wisdom to expose and destroy affliction, how can they escape from the birth and death that have no beginning? The master said, Affliction is body. They are not true and not different. One who uses wisdom to expose and destroy affliction has the views and understanding of the two vehicles and the potential of the sheep and dear cards, those of superior wisdom and great rules are completely different. Sia Chien said, What are the views and understanding of the great vehicle? The master said, The common person sees light and darkness as two, but the wise person comprehends that their nature is non-dual. The non-dual nature is the real nature. The real nature does not decrease in common people, nor increase in worthy sages. In afflictions, it is not confused, and in Diana concentration, it is not still. It is neither cut off nor permanent. It does not come or go. It is not inside, outside, or in the middle. It is not produced or destroyed. The natural and mark is thus, thus. 
it permanently dwells and does not change. It is called the way. Commentary. Sir Chen wished for instruction on the essentials of the principle of using the mind to seal the mind. He said that the patriarch was like a lamp, setting a hundred thousand lamps burning in the capital, bright, bright, limitless light. The master said, you shouldn't see light and darkness as if as different, or affliction and body as different. Affliction and the enlightenment nature are one. Shravakas and Pratika Buddhas destroy affliction by means of wisdom, but Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are completely different from them. Ordinary pupils see understanding and ignorance as two, but wise people know that the essence they are one, not two, that non-dual nature is the real nature instead of confusion. The real nature is not confused. In Dhyana concentration, it is not still. It is both still and, un and moving. It both moves and is still. The nature and mark are both thus. We call it the way. Sutra, Sir Chen said, How does your explanation that the self-nature is neither produced nor destroyed differ from that of other religions? The master answered, as non-production and non-extinction are explained by other religions. Extinction ends production and production reveals extinction. Their extinction is not extinction and what they call production is not production. My explanation of non-production and non-extinction is this originally there was no production and now there is no extinction. For this reason, my explanation differs from that of other religions. If you wish to know the essentials of the mind, simply do not think of good or evil. You will then enter naturally the clear, pure substance of the mind, which is deep and permanently still, and whose wonderful abilities are as numerous as the sand grains in the Ganges River. Commentary other religions are see production and extinction as two. They say that extinction puts an end to production and that production reveals extinction. Their explanation is not the ultimate one. As I explained the terms originally, there was no production and so now there is no extinction. The master continued. If you would like to know about the wonderful mind transmission drama, the essential points of the mind ground drama door, I will tell you simply do not think of good or evil. Then you will spontaneously understand the true principle and enter into the pure substance of the mind. The mind substance is deep and constantly pure and still. Although it is always still within its true emptiness, there is wonderful existence, and its wonderful abilities are innumerable. Sutra Si Chien received this instruction and was suddenly greatly enlightened. He bowed, took leave, and returned to the palace to report the master's speech. That year on the third of the ninth month, a proclamation was issued in praise of the master. It read, the master has declined our invitation because of old age and illness. He cultivates the way for us and is a field of blessings for the country. The master is like Vima Lakati who pleaded illness in Bashali. He spreads the great fruit widely, transmitting the Buddha mind and discoursing on the non dual drama. Sir Chen has conveyed the master's instruction the knowledge and vision of the Tathagata. It must be due to accumulated good acts, abundant blessings, and gurus planted in former lives that we now have met with the Master when he appears in the world and have suddenly been enlightened to the Supreme Vihigo. We are extremely grateful for his kindness which we receive with bowed heads and now offer in return a Mona rope and crystal bow as gifts. We ordered the magistrate of Shao Chou to rebuild the temple buildings and convert the master's former dwelling place into a temple to be called Kuo An, Kanji's kindness. 
Commentary. Suo Chen returned to the capital and submitted a written report to the impress which set forth the principles the master had discussed with him. The palace then issued a statement in praise of the master, saying he was the highest master in the nation and one of unexcelled cultivation. They said that the Sikh patriarch was like the layman Vimalakati, who was sick in Vashali. The master propagates the great fruit, the Mahayana Buddha Dharma, and transmits the Buddha mind, the mind seal of all Buddhas. At Nanhua Temple, he espoused the non dual Dharma door, saying that production and extinction are one, and the nature and marker are not two. His knowledge and vision are that of the Buddha. We must have done a lot of good things in past lives in order to meet the master now and suddenly awaken to the wonderful principle of the Supreme Vihigo. We bow to his teaching every day and hold it respectfully above our heads. They offered the master an expensive robe made of Korean cloth which had been sent as tribute to the impress. It was a patchwork robe with a Buddha image embroidered on each part. Some say that the impress embroidered them herself, but there is no way to know with certainty.